Hi, everyone, and welcome to Feed and Grain Chat. I'm your host, Elise Schaefer, editor of Feed and Grain. This edition of Feed and Grain Chat is brought to you by Watt Global Media and FeedandGrain.com. FeedandGrain.com is your source for the latest news, product, and equipment information for the grain handling and feed manufacturing industries. Today, I'm joined on Zoom by Darren Newsom, Bar Chart Senior Market Analyst. He's here today to give us his analysis on 2023 crop production and the grain markets. Hi, Darren. Thanks for joining me today. Hi, Elise. It's good to visit with you. Absolutely. Now, in July, Bar Chart increased its corn yield estimate and decreased soybean projections. What factored into those adjustments, and are they still tracking the same today? Yeah, it's interesting. You know, so much of the industry saw much the same thing when reports and these estimates started coming out in early or the first half of July. Much of the U.S. was still in a drought situation. We hadn't seen the full effects of the switch from La Nina to El Nino kick in yet. But as the month of July progressed and we got into August, you know, so basically from midpoint of July through the midpoint of August, we've seen better rains across much of the plains and Midwest. And so, you know, we actually saw the latest estimates from bar chart came out just under 178 bushels per acre in corn for a national average yield. So it's a pretty solid number. And the soybeans, you know, still struggling a little bit, still having some areas of some drought affecting soybeans are a bit more of an August crop. So there were still some questions out there, just under 51 bushels per acre. So as I said, there's still some questions about what soybeans might yield, but there seems to be a growing acceptance that corn's going to probably be okay for the most part. So what are your yield predictions for global competitors of U.S. grain, like Brazil and Argentina? Yeah, what we're dealing with right now is, again, if, if we want to use a template from what can happen with that weather switch from La Nina to El Nino, we have, don't have to work, look any further than, than what happened in Brazil. They were expected to have a good crop in 2023, and they did this past January, February, March as harvest was going on, what turned out to be record crops in some cases. So what we're dealing with now is most of the exports being made globally are, have to do with, you know, they're coming out of Brazil at this point. They're moving a lot of corn. They're moving a lot of soybeans. In fact, they have displaced, at least the projections are showing they've displaced the U.S. as the number one exporter in the world at this point, something that U.S. just hasn't seen in a long time. Are there any circumstances or anomalies on your radar that could potentially impact yields this fall? Yeah, it, as far as corn goes, I don't really see much of a change coming, you know, as far as estimates and these sorts of things by the time we get to harvest. And I would not be surprised to see the combines start rolling over parts of the U.S. here in August. We're almost to harvest, so I don't look for a lot of changes. What could happen is we've seen it before. I think a couple of years ago, we saw a derecho move across the Midwest where it just knocked a lot of the crop in, in Iowa flat. So we have to be careful of those sorts of anomalies. As far as soybeans, as I said earlier, they're still up in the air. There's still a great deal of question about what production could be for U.S. soybeans. If the weather forecasts turn out to be right and we see a very hot and dry end to August, I think that could continue to take some of the yield potential off the 2023 U.S. soybean crop. So what kind of implications does your analysis have for grain merchandisers and originators in the United States? The biggest thing that my analysis is looking at right now is, is what does the commercial side of the market? So, you know, it's kind of a circular situation where, you know, I, I'm looking at what the merchandisers are telling me through their positioning and future spreads and basis. And then I'm relaying that. And then some of the merchandisers are reading that, that analysis. So, and what we can see is we've had the corn market indicate that the commercial side, the merchandisers, end users, exporters, and so on, have grown more comfortable with 2023 production. And we can see that in the way the future spreads or the way the prices of the different contracts line up in the 2023-24 marketing year. They're not as bullish as they used to be. They've moved to more of a neutral stance. And again, this has to do with we don't have a lot of supplies coming out of the old crop year. So even if we have large production, it's going to add, it's going to make a more comfortable available stocks to use situation. But 
not as burdensome as what we've seen in some years past. On the soybeans, it's still the opposite of that. We still have a bullish view. The merchandisers still have a bullish view of soybeans. And again, it comes down to fewer acres. And we knew that going back to last February, Dees Corn had bought acres away from no beans. So you know, we've got fewer acres planted here in the US. And now if we have a hot and dry August and taking the top off the yield estimates as well, there's still the possibility of a smaller crop than what was expected. And you asked earlier about Argentina. Argentina had a bad crop due to weather. And they're the world's number one soybean meal exporter. So if the U.S. crush for soybeans picks up as expected in 2023-24, we're going to see more bean oil used domestically and the world continuing to search for more soybean meal to replace what was lost out of Argentina. Well, thank you so much for your analysis today, Darren. Well, I really appreciate you having me on and I enjoyed our conversation. Yes, likewise. That's all for today's Feed and Grain Chat. If you'd like to see more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel, sign up for the Industry Watch daily e-newsletter, or go to feedinggrain.com and search for videos. And if you'd like to hear more insights like Darren provided today, be sure to check out Bar Chart's Grain Merchandising and Technology Conference coming up this September. Thank you again for joining, and I hope to see you next time.